So you're going to Tanzania to climb Mount Kilimanjaro and you are trying to figure out what to bring. If you're watching this video, you are probably in the same spot that I was just several weeks ago. I am three days freshly back from summoning Kilimanjaro via the seven day Rongai route. I went in early September, one of the dry, warmer seasons. It was an amazing trip, tough trip, but amazing experience, totally recommend it if you're thinking about it. But you're trying to figure out what to bring, which is why you're here. And if you've watched this video, or if you're watching this video, you probably should, and I recommend watching a lot of the other videos that are out there on this same topic. And a lot of them are done by experienced people, maybe even people that own their own trekking companies. And I think those are amazing, and I watched a lot of those before I did this. But I'm a Kilimanjaro newbie, I've done it one time. And so I'm gonna try and do this video from a little bit different angle to perhaps make it helpful in a different way. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna go one body part at a time, talk about what I brought, just kind of factually, here's what I brought, and then how did that work out? Would I have brought that same thing? Would I have changed it? Would I have added something? Did I bring too much? So I'll go through all that, and then at the end, I interviewed my guide Francis, who was amazing, and who has been to the summit over 300 times, and I said, hey, you are obviously experienced. What do you bring on this? Where I can, I will also try and put links to specific items I talk about below, because in the past I'd watch videos and they'd say, bring, bring a pair of trekking pants or bring a fleece or whatever. And I never knew like what level of those sorts of things do I need to bring. And so again, I'll try and put some links that you can check out down below. So let's go with things. First, you need to get to Tanzania. You're gonna fly from wherever you are. And most of the routes seem to go through Addis Ababa. But when I did it, I thought I was gonna go through there. I actually ended up going from Istanbul down to Kilimanjaro. But you're going to need some stuff to get there. For the flight to get there, I take some carry-ons. I brought a 22 inch wheeled carry-on and this is an Eagle Creek. And in this, you wanna make sure you put your hiking boots because you don't wanna to have to buy new hiking boots in Moshi and break them in on a long hike up a mountain. And then also a backpack. This is a personal preference, but I have found that travel backpacks don't do hiking well and hiking backpacks don't do travel well. So this is an Osprey Nebula. I've taken this all over the world. I've done videos on it, I'll put a link up above. And this is my favorite travel backpack that I've been using for years. And I like this because, it, again, it's more of a travel type style. It doesn't have the hip belt. It's got a good spot for a suspended laptop inside. I think this is uh, 36 liters or so, 34 liters. So between the two of these, there was plenty of space for hiking boots and a couple changes of clothes. Of note, I didn't realize this until I caught it briefly on a video. If you are going through Addis Ababa and you have an over 12 hour layover, the airline should give you a free night in a hotel there. However, you are not going to get your big suitcase back. You're only gonna have your carry-on. So make sure if you have that, that you have enough clothes for that overnight. Next, you need a duffel bag for the climb. I brought this Patagonia 130 liter duffel bag. I've seen recommendations anywhere from 60, most recommend up to 100, but there are some that say up to 130. I brought this to Everest Base Camp. I also have a 90 or 100 liter uh, similar bag to this, but this is 130 liters and it's what I brought. There's the factual side and how did it work out? It worked out great because for me, like I said, I bring a travel backpack, but then I also need a hiking backpack. In this case, I'll get to this in a minute, but my Osprey Manta. And I need a place to put this. So if I was not bringing this, I could probably get by with a 100 liter duffel bag. But because I need to bring all my gear for the climb, and then this also needs to go inside here, I brought this 130 liter bag. It was still well under the limit. The porters can carry up to 20 kilograms, which is about 44 pounds. And you, you, you're, you really shouldn't, there's no way you're gonna exceed that for your week on the mountain. It would be really difficult to bring that much stuff. But I like this 130 liter bag again because I could fit my trekking poles in it, I could fit my hiking backpack in it, and then all my clothes. And then for the climb, they take these, the porters will take this and they'll stuff it into a sack and they, they carry it up the mountain. It's good for this to be waterproof, but it looks like they put it in a waterproof bag anyway. I also like these Patagonia packs because they have these backpack type straps so that when I'm going through the airport, I can put this on my back as a backpack. It's a big backpack and then I have my wheeled one and I carry my other one. And then my hiking day pack, this is an Osprey Manta 36. I like this pack because it has a water bladder here and you can have the tube that comes out through here, goes down. 
I don't know how much of a difference this truly makes, but I use the insulated water tubing for when I go somewhere where it's cold. On summit night, it is awful darn cold, and a lot of people have had their water tubing freeze, and I had mine freeze when I was hiking in Yellowstone snowshoeing. So if you're going to use this, especially when it's cold, after you drink out of it, blow the water back out. That way there's no water in the tube to freeze. On the outside of the pack, I had this Maxpedition little pouch, and this was perfect for putting my cell phone in when I was hiking, because I use my cell phone a lot for cameras. I didn't carry a big camera up the mountain, and this was perfect for that. Link to that one down below. There's a bunch of these little pouches, but I thought this one worked out really well. It was nice and firm and stable on there. I also stuck a little thermometer on here, this Thermodrop. I've done a review on this. Uh, kind of gave me an idea of how cold it was getting and how cold it was getting in the tent, just for some interesting information. I thought before I went, do I really need 36? Could I really just bring a 28 liter pack? But no, I recommend the something larger like this, like a 36, because for most of the days, you don't need that much, but for some at night, this was full with all the gear and the stuff that I took off. So the larger one is better and you can cinch it down. Now you're probably going to fly into Moshi and you're going to stay there maybe a day or so before the hike. You're going to need some clothes just for around town, some casual stuff. I wanted to do some laundry when I got there, so I brought some little wool light stuff so I could do stuff in the sink because the way laundry typically happens in Tanzania is that they often hand wash it and they hang dry it. I emailed the hotel before I went and said, hey, you have laundry service, how long does it take? They said, well, it depends on the weather, which made me kind of laugh a little bit. But anyway, uh, I brought some of these little things and I did the laundry in the sink. Now you're gonna need a sleeping bag, obviously. Depending on your tour operator, you may be sleeping flat on the ground. You may have some sleeping pads to sleep on, or you may even have a cot to sleep on, depending on sort of how fancy things are for you. And sleeping bags are one of those things you could spend $10,000 and get a one ounce minus 300 bag. Okay, not really, but, but the theory is that the amount you spend on the bag is proportional to how compact and lightweight it is. I brought the hike and bike EOS zero degree Fahrenheit minus 17 Celsius. And I was nervous about this before I went because it's a really small lightweight pack, but it did really well. Most of the hiking companies will give you a hot water bottle to sleep with at night. Either they'll fill up your Nalgene with hot water and you sleep with that or mine actually gave me a, a soft sided hot water bottle. And between that and the sleeping bag, it worked out really well. Other things that I also brought, I brought a sleeping bag liner. I never use this, but depending on how cold it is and how cold tolerant you are, I usually sleep warm, but I did bring this and this will add some more degrees of warmth to this if you need it. Your tour company will probably also give you a pillow, but if not, you might also consider bringing a small camp pillow. I did bring this and actually liked this better than the one that they gave me. So I used theirs for a couple nights and then I started using mine and it's you know, super small and compact. I highly recommend hiking poles. I like Likes, but there are a ton of brands out there. These are the ones that just cinch down to this size, but they have ones that fold down, you know, they come apart into sections and they're much smaller. Just kind of depends what you like. There's different styles. I'll put a link to these below, but I do recommend these. They're nice when you're coming down the mountain, both when you're kind of skiing down after the summit, down this little loose scree, helps kind of stabilize things. And then when you're hiking down farther, it just kind of gets much, much better being a quadruped than a biped. So a personal preference, but I like hiking poles. Next, moving on to feet. I brought socks one for every day. I figured socks and underwear were both lightweight. And so I brought a clean pair for every day. Socks, I brought some thicker ones, especially for summit night. And I did bring a few pair of sock liners. I use these a couple times, including summit night. And overall, I think it was good having clean socks every day. If you bring liners, which are super thin, you can definitely get more time out of your socks because you're not getting as much foot sweat onto your socks. But I thought the socks were small enough. I brought a pair for every day. I would maybe recommend a little bit heavier pair to sleep in because at night, sometimes my feet were a little bit cold, so maybe a thicker pair for camp. You then need shoes. I recommend two pairs of shoes. You need a lightweight pair of camp shoes that you will probably also wear on the plane and around town, and then a pair of hiking boots. For the camp shoes, I brought these Ultra Lone Peak 5s. I like them because they were lightweight, they were pretty scrunchy, and yet they were still trail shoes. They were good for walking around camp and packed down pretty small when I needed them to be. My only complaint and thing that I would improve about these is that I would bring waterproof ones. These are not waterproof, 
And when you are down lower on the mountain, it tends to be kind of misty and there's some dew in the morning or maybe when you're getting up to go to the bathroom. And so these got a little bit wet, my feet got a little bit wet. So I would recommend that your camp shoes be waterproof. Hiking boots, uh, personal preference, there's a million of these. I like Solomon's, these are the uh, 4D GTX. I've been wearing these all over the world as well. I've had a couple different pairs of them. They're very comfortable. You want to get heavier boots. I have some lightweight boots that maybe I would do the Grand Canyon in, but for this where it's cold, again, especially for summit night, you definitely want the heavier boots, heavier and certainly waterproof. So that's what I wear when I go. I also recommend that you bring a bag to put your shoes in because, so you're going to wear these to hike in and these are probably going to get muddy and wet, I discovered. And so it's better than just throwing them in your duffel. I would put them in this travel shoe bag. This one's by Eagle Creek. There's a bunch of these out there. And then I would stick this in my duffel so that it didn't get my stuff in the duffel bag all wet and muddy. The only other thing I might consider footwear would have been a pair of like lightweight slides or flip flops or thongs or whatever you want to call them because there were times where you maybe got up at night to go to the bathroom or something and it was a little bit of a hassle to put your shoes on. It was not a big deal, I did fine with them, but if you have the room and you have something small, you might consider something like that. Moving up to the legs next, like I said, I brought clean underwear for every day. I figured they were small enough and clean underwear is a nice luxury. Typically what I would do is I would sleep with my underwear and I, I would wear a pair to bed and I would take my other pair of underwear that I was going to wear the next day and if I was changing my shirt, I would put those in the sleeping bag with me because you wake up and it is cold and that way it's a small thing, but you're gonna put something that's slightly warmer on. Pants, I had a pair of fleece bottoms, fleece pants that I would wear in camp. I'd put these on every night when I got to camp and I would sleep in them. Bunch of options for hiking pants. I really am fond of the cools. These are the, I think, Renegade convertibles. I have a bunch of pairs of these. I've done a video on them. Cools are very proud of their product with their pricing, but the end product is really nice, and so this is what I typically hike in. I thought about, do I need to bring shorts? But what you can do is if you bring hiking pants that zip off, you have shorts effectively with you. Also, because these have these zippers, you can kind of vent these. So I would sometimes just unzip the back and get some ventilation on the back of my leg and maybe the lower side part and just get a little bit of air movement if it was warm, but not quite warm enough, or I didn't want to go all the way to shorts. Uh, pretty much as far as number of clothes, I see the recommended amounts that they say two pairs of pants, two shirts. I brought roughly one isolated pair of everything for summit night and one pair for every two days. So I brought, it was a seven day hike. I think I brought three pairs of pants. I would typically wear them. I'd put them on, I'd hike with them through the day. I'd take them off at night. I'd put my fleece pants on. The next day I'd put them back on. And then the third day I would change to another pair of pants. And again, I was still way under the weight limit. You can get by depending on your level of kind of dirt tolerance. You could, you could get by with one pair if you wanted. I also brought two pairs of thermal bottoms, either smart wool or icebreaker. These are a little bit heavier and I wore these for summit night. And then I brought rain pants. If you're going to get rain pants, which I recommend you need to bring, I recommend getting ones that zip down the whole way. I've learned this from trial and error of having ones that only zip Part way, when you're trying to get these off with your boots on, it's a huge pain. So do yourself a favor and get the ones that full zip down the side. I actually never wore these because, well, it didn't really rain, so I didn't need them for that. And then for some at night, I ended up wearing a little bit different. The pants that I don't have here that I also had were a heavy pair of like snow ski pants. And I, my plan for some at night was to wear long johns, regular pants, rain pants and I thought I would be fine, but Francis said, no, you need the heavier pants. Next is shirts. So a couple different types of shirts I brought. To wear around camp at night, I have a thick smart wool top and I would put this and those fleece bottoms on and that was my camp and bedwear. So I had this, kept that clean, I put on every night, take it off in the morning. I had several thin shirts. Like this is just a really thin shirt from Patagonia and I would wear this when it was down low or it also worked well for layering. But I also had a thin smart wool t-shirt. I had a couple of these. And again, I would, just like with the pants, I would put this on in the morning and I would wear it through the day. At night, I would add this thicker smart wool on top of it. And the next morning I would take it off. I would still have this on. I would wear it through the next day. And then finally the third day, I would switch to a new shirt. I also had this really lightweight 
long sleeve top that I love. It was nice when it was just slightly cool. It's pretty breathable. And so I wore this a couple times as well. And the way I did my clothing, breaking them down was I had a packing cube. I brought a bunch of packing cubes, by the way. I brought a packing cube and in this one, maybe I had socks or underwear and then I had a larger one that I had pants and another one that I had shirts. And then I had one specifically just fully set up for summit night. That way summit night, I'd be like, here's my summit outfit. Let's get it all out and put that all on. All right, next is jackets. I brought sort of two and a half jackets. I brought a down vest. I brought a Patagonia Nano Air with a hood. You see the, the pattern here, Patagonia and Patagonia. I like Patagonia. Uh, Patagonia Nano Air and then this Patagonia rain jacket. I've had this for a bunch of years. I spent way too much money on it, I don't know, seven or eight, nine years ago. It weighs all of seven ounces. And I love these jackets that just fold up into their own pocket like, like this one does and they, they all do this. So they make it much easier to pack. The Nano Air, I wore a bunch. A lot of the companies, they recommend bringing a fleece. I didn't bring a fleece. In my mind, a fleece seemed like a bulkier shirt that would get dirty. So anytime that I would have worn a fleece, I put this on and it was great. I wore this to breakfast and dinner and I'd put my hood up or I'd wear a hat and I wore it to hike in and it's breathable and it's flexible. I love the Nano Air jacket. Check that out. And then I would layer it with this lightweight raincoat and this all worked well together. Sometimes I wore the raincoat by itself, it was cooler. Sometimes just this, again, just depends on the layering. But I thought these worked out really well for what I had. A lot of the trekking companies also recommend that you have a heavyweight parka type jacket, especially for summit night or for around camp. I did not bring one of those. Uh, my tour company did give me one and I never unpacked it. It always stayed folded up in its pocket. I wore this around camp. I wore this any time that I think I would have worn that. Now some smaller miscellaneous stuff, gloves and hats and stuff. I brought three pairs of gloves. I brought a pair of liner gloves, which are somewhere in Tanzania, I think on the mountain. Uh, I don't quite know what happened with them. I kind of lost them on summit night. So I brought liner gloves that I wore a couple times when it was just a little bit cool. And then I brought these heavier waterproof serious ones uh, that worked out well. I wore these and then on summit night, I layered them with these mitts. And the way I did this was I had hand warmers. My, my hands were freezing uh, some at night. And so I put one of these on. And then I put the hand warmer here. And then I put the mitten on and then my trekking pole. And this was just enough to keep my hands warm because my fingers were freezing, but the hand warmer here worked out just well enough. So. I thought that was kind of a nice way to, to do that. I did have some foot warmers and they didn't do a darn thing for me. Next, headwear. I brought a couple things. I brought a small, super lightweight, essentially baseball hat. I never wore this because I brought a sun hat, which is what I wore all the time. This is by Outdoor Research. I've taken this all over. And the sun hat is nicer because it's going to be better protection for your ears and your face a little bit headband that was good for keeping my ears warm. I would also sometimes layer this. I brought a lightweight smart wool hat and there's a couple different ways I would layer this. I sometimes would wear this. Sometimes I slept in this. If it was a little bit colder, I layered my headband over the hat. I also brought a buff. A couple times I layered this over my ears. Uh, so that's what I did for headgear. The balaclava, I never wore this. Uh, Summit night, which I'll get to, was not as cold as I thought it might be, but I did bring it just in case. Next is sunglasses. I brought two pairs of sunglasses. I brought a regular pair of Oakleys and I brought a pair of Jobo Glacier glasses because I couldn't tell before I went, there were things either way. Do you need Glacier glasses? Do you not need Glacier glasses? I don't know. So I brought both pairs, but the Glacier glasses, I left in Moshi with my stuff. I did not bring them on the mountain. I wore these. Oakley glasses, they have the black prism lens. And the question on whether you need glacier glasses, let me answer this with a absolutely most emphatic, no, you do not need glacier glasses with one possible caveat. I climbed in September, it was not snowy. If you are going at a time of year where it is snowy and it's bright sun, maybe these will help. These let 5% of light through, 
these black prism lenses let 11% through. And these were so more than plenty. If you're not going in the snow, you absolutely do not need glacier glasses. Now that I've talked about all the clothes individually, let me talk about what I wore specifically for summit night. And what that consisted of was a pair of liner socks and a pair of thick hiking socks. Over the bottom of these, I put toe uh, foot warmers. I can tell you those did absolutely nothing. For the first two hours of the summit climb, my toes were numb and a little bit painful and I was afraid I was gonna get frostbite. Uh, but eventually they came back to life and I still have all 10 of my toes. So that's what I had on my feet along with my boots, obviously. On my legs, I had two pairs of smart wool, thermal smart wool bottoms, of course, on top of my underwear. And then on top of that, I had the heavyweight ski pants. Could I have gotten by with just my, this regular hiking pants and rain pants? Probably, but Francis recommended the ski pants and they were fine. Even for the way down where you're a little bit warmer and the sun's out, they also did fine. Top half of me, I wore a short sleeve smart wool shirt followed by one, I can't remember if it was one or two, long sleeve smart wool shirts, thicker. And on top of that, the Patagonia Nano Air. And on top of that, the um, lightweight rain shell. I had that heavyweight down parka. I never wore it, never took it out. And I was plenty warm with this. Now, one slight caveat with my summit night is that instead of us starting climbing at midnight, we started at 5 a.m. So we were going through the dark for about two hours with the headlamp that you most definitely need. And then the sun came up and it was, it got warm. So again, a caveat might be that if you're going to hike eight hours through the darkness, you might want something a little bit warmer and that parka may come more in handy, but my body was not cold at all. The things that were cold on me were my fingertips and my toes, and they were both numb and painful. Hand warmer in the two gloves between them definitely helped with my hands. And so that was what I had on my body. And then on my head, I had my hat, followed by the headband, followed by the hood, both hoods actually. And really, I was plenty warm. All right, now let me talk about a few other miscellaneous items. So you're going to get every morning and evening a little bowl of hot water for washi-washi, as they say. And it really did amaze me just how clean you could get with that. If you are really fancy, you can have them bring a shower tent, which I would say um, you don't need because it's really kind of too cold to get naked outside in a gravity fed shower, but it is a thing on the mountain if you are so inclined to do it. You probably should bring a towel, but oh my God, do not bring a crazy large camp towel. I don't know why I got it in my head that I needed this. I, I, I brought this new towel and this thing was so gargantuan. Do not bring a huge towel. Bring a towel, but like God, not, not one that's that big. I had a smaller one. I don't know why I thought I'd to bring that one. Uh, I also brought a stuff sack. This is a large Sea to Summit and I essentially use this as a dirty clothes bag. For getting clean, you get that bowl for washi washi. Uh, I did shave three times. Uh, that worked out well. I would, I wash my hair in it. I wet my hair and then for soap wise, I use some of this Dr. Bronner's Castile soap. Um, this is the, what size? Castile the soap two ounce, 59 milliliter size. And for my whole two weeks in Tanzania, which included some showers before and after the climb, I used probably three quarters of this two ounce bottle. I got some wipes. I used Survive Wear, uh, extra large. This was a 32 count. I still have a bunch left. Um, but it really, it amazed me just how clean you could get between the bowl and the wipes. And it's kind of cold, so you don't get that sweaty. Um, but it was fine for that. I also brought my little toiletry kit. This is the one I bring everywhere. It's nice and small and it's compact. In the middle of the night and you're taking Diamox and you're probably gonna have to go to the bathroom. Uh, and it is cold and you do not have any motivation to leave your tent. Undo two zippers, go out. You, you don't wanna do it. Bring a pee bottle. Uh, the day before I left, I went and bought some, you know, gatorade -y kind of stuff and I drank it and I brought this as a pee bottle. Um, it worked well enough, but I would say just being candid to bring a bigger one. Uh, I would bring one that has a bigger mouth for ease of aim in the night in your dark tent. And not that I ever overflowed this, but this one's 16 ounces. I might've brought one that was just slightly larger, maybe 20 ounces with a bigger hole for 
ease of use. Some other stuff, uh, absolutely need sun lotion because it gets bright and warm and you don't want to get burnt. Also with the suntan lotion, you want to make sure you bring some type of lip, something chapstick or something similar because it does get pretty dry up there and your lips will get pretty chapped. I had seen some people say to bring an umbrella. I had this in my duffel. I never used it. It never rained, but some people recommended that. I have this little kind of fishing box with all my trip drugs in it. I will do a separate video on this. I've done a video on this before, but I will update this. But this is a nice compact size for keeping all of my medications in for the climb. I had a little medical kit, which I brought everywhere. And I found that on all these hikes, the guide usually has a pretty decent medical kit. This is really kind of heavy. So I carried it the first couple of days in my day pack, but in talking to him, he was like, you know, I've got one, leave yours in your duffel bag, make your, your backpack lighter. So I stopped carrying this through the day because he had one with him. I brought water purification tablets, but again, depending on what kind of climb you're doing, uh, my group had a uh, kit and filter, and so I did not need and did not use those. Bug spray for the mosquitoes, uh, I did not use. You need some stuff to charge your electronics. I brought these two, it's a 10,000 and a 12,000 milliamp hour charge. Uh, I had upgraded a few things on my trip and I did not realize that they were going to bring this thing that was the size of a car battery. And so I think our whole group, the guide and the porters and me all use this thing. And it wasn't until the very like morning of the last day that it finally died. So I use this a couple times, but you're gonna need some stuff depending on what kind of electronics you bring. There is some scattered signal on the mountain. As of now, September, 2022, there is supposed to be Wi-Fi about halfway up the mountain on the south side, it's supposed to be the summit by the end of the year. Uh, we came down on that side and the Wi-Fi signal was still very spotty, uh, not reliable. And there was some regular signal in a couple spots, but you know, just enough you kind of let your family know that you are alive. Uh, I did have a, a light that I could use in my tent. I could hang it, it magnetized. Uh, my company also, however, provided a solar powered light that hung from the top of the tent. So I only use this a few times. Flashlights, I brought this small little AAA uh, through night and I brought this Olight Warrior Mini 2. The Olight, all I did with this, I used it once to impress Francis, my guide, and now he wants one. And this little baby through night is what I've used. You know, it comes on to like a half lumen and that is so totally plenty for a night when your eyes are adjusted. I, same thing when I was in Nepal. This was the light that I got the most use out of. For the most part, you know, I would bring one, but you're probably not going to need a big, huge light. And you have your headlamp anyway. Don't forget extra batteries for some at night just in case. Uh, often the daily schedule was wake up at 6.30, do breakfast, go hike till about lunch. Often after lunch, the afternoon was free and I'd usually take a nap. And a couple times it was bright and I happened to have one of these eye masks that I got from the flight on the way there. And it was actually useful for my afternoon naps. The other thing is snacks. Check with your tour company to see how many snacks they're going to provide for you. They told me they were not going to give me any initially, so I brought a moderate amount, but then they gave me some, and I saw some people say, don't over bring snacks, and I would say that's definitely true. I brought some like little sugary things to chew on the way, and I had some Snickers, but they also gave me some of these things. So you might just check with them to see how many snacks you realistically need to bring, but it's probably less than you think. Electronics camera-wise, I brought I guess technically three cameras. I brought my cell phone that I used a lot for pictures. I brought an Osmo uh, Pocket Mini 2. I could use this for selfie stuff or I would use it to kind of film various movie stuff on the hike. I also had a GoPro with a tripod. You know, you could use this with the handle this way or there were a couple times that I put the tripod down and use it like that. And then obviously you're gonna need some stuff to charge them, but you will probably want a couple camera options, but depending on what you're doing, you can carry a whole bunch of DSLR stuff, but a lot of times for most people, modern cell phones are going to be just fine for documenting your trip. All right, so that was long, but that's everything I, the Kilimanjaro newbie brought. Now let's talk to Francis who's been to the top over 300 times and see what he's bringing. So this is Francis who is amazing and has been to the top 300 times, quite experienced. So I thought we would get an experienced uh, take on what he brings to the top, all in this small, compared to my bag, 65 liter backpack, which includes his sleeping bag 
and his uh, sleeping pad. So I, maybe we go by um, body parts. So start on your feet. So you, you have hiking boots. Mm -hmm. Marino kind of socks. That's uh -huh. the most I prefer. How many pairs of socks do you bring? Uh, normally, so it's uh, depending on how long am I going, but normally. Okay. So we did a week wrong guy, yeah, seven yeah. day wrong guy. So I had I brought with me uh, five pairs. Okay. One, one special for the summit, and the what? rest I can do like one pair for two days, kind what, of. What's different about your summit socks? Uh, the summit socks should be heavy and uh, uh, warm, kind of you know warm material, mm -hmm. which is warm enough for going in the cold area. Mm -hmm. But the other socks is just lighter because it's a daytime walking. Yeah. So avoid like too much sweating and friction. You know. Regular hiking pants, which for a week kind of trip is three. Okay. So one is for going back to where I live in, in town and the two of them is like in my regular hiking. Mm -hmm. One should be light and the two of them should be thick because as high I go, it's, it's a little bit chilly. Do you bring a different pair for summit night or you just wear one of yeah, those? Yeah, so the summit uh, pants is different. So the three I mentioned is just the regular hiking trouser. Then on top of that, yes, I have the summit trouser, which is thicker. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, windshield. So normally uh, <coughs> for the summit, I just wear like uh, two thermal okay. bottoms, and on top of that one is the summit trouser. That's okay. all. Yeah. How many thermals do you bring? No, normally two. Two. Okay. Two. And normally I just wear them for the summit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, shirts. Yes. So four hiking t-shirts with me. One is special for going back home, and the three of them is. Just the rig for the regular hiking, and then uh, two thermal tops for the summit, uh, and uh, light two fleece uh, with um, rain jacket. Is this a, you count this as a fleece that you're wearing? Yeah, so okay. it is a fleece, and normally I would put on this one when I'm you know here at the camp. Mm. Yeah. Do you have any special camp clothes? So I don't have like the special clothes for the camp, but I have a special for sleeping. Yeah, so normally it's like a, a kind of a light wolf material uh, trouser and a long sleeve kind of t-shirts. Mm, yeah. okay. That's uh, separately for, for sleeping. Yeah, I, I don't mix that one with the other one. And jackets, what do you bring for that? Normally I don't uh, I don't have like the special jacket for whatever, but uh, for the summit, yes, I have the special jacket which is heavy mm -hmm. uh, and uh, windbreaker. Mm -hmm. So on the summit we don't have the rain. Mostly, if it happens, it's a snow. So all the summit trouser and the summit jacket should be like water resistance and windbreaker, because uh, on the top we don't need this rain stuff here. And one hat. Yeah. So uh, one hat, <coughs> one buff, uh, and most of my jacket has the hood, mm -hmm. so which is enough to cover my. Yeah, and and you're Superman, so you don't bring gloves. <laughs> so my duty is uh, to help uh, all, all of the time uh, from the base camp to the summit. Sometimes I take big group, which uh, normally require me to give the help most of the time. So yeah. having the gloves with me is giving me a difficult time, like put on, put off, take off, take, uh, put on. So I prefer to keep my hands in the warm area, so it can be like a jacket pockets which are warm enough, or like uh, my summit trouser pocket. Then it's gonna be easy for me. Like I can do it like immediately or a very quick help to to my client. Makes sense. Then having my sunglasses, coming down is the sun facing on your you know like direct to you. So we need the sunglasses. But sometimes even on the top, this this kind of the snow, you know, when the reflect the sun uh, is out, is reflecting to you know from the eyes to your eyes. So no matter you need the eyes to be protected. Mm -hmm. They're very important. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, sounds good. Awesome. Thank, thank you for the tips compared to my newbie tips. Uh -huh. All right, thank you. So there you go, packing from the newbie side of things, packing from the experienced person side of things. Hopefully it was helpful for you. Kind of long, I know, but I will put some links down below. You can check out some of the specifics. If you have any questions, post them down below. I'll try and answer them as well. But good luck on your packing. Good luck on your climb. It's an amazing experience. I totally recommend it if you're up for giving it a try. Nakuru ame fika, 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 Nakuru ame fika,
Amelia, 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 Amelia,